Amen. So if you would uh, stand one more time, thank you for being in the house of God. Amen. Jeremiah, the eighth chapter. Jeremiah, chapter eight. We need to certainly pray for these that are uh, sick in body. Uh, Brother Jimmy has a very low immune system, and, and he has decided to self-quarantine. And there's others that are not here today, and, uh, and that's, for some of them, that's uh, primary the, primarily the reason. And so we're, we need to hold them up in prayer. Praise God. Jeremiah, the 8th chapter, the 22nd verse. Now, before I dig into this, uh, if anybody decides that uh, your immune system's not strong or whatever, I know we, like I said, we're putting uh, trust and faith in God and all that, but uh, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to dog you for not being here. Uh, we will, uh, we'll pray for you and hold you up before the Lord and and we'll see you in a few days and make sure you have access to the online messages or whatever because they've already been available for a while. And if you do not have, if you're not a part of the uh, sermons only Facebook group, the uh, closed member group we have, and, and you have a smartphone, uh, we can send the link so you can listen to them um, yourself uh, via your smartphone. And uh, so, and, and, uh, I found out yesterday that there was a couple people that I did not know that wasn't a part of that. Uh, Brother Javier was one of them. I thought he was already on there. Uh, so we added him. If anybody else is not on that uh, group there that's a closed uh, AJNC uh, church group uh, that gives uh, the online uh, the sermons that we record, if you uh, want to be a part of that, let me know if you're not already a part of that. Amen. Jeremiah, the 8th chapter, the 22nd verse. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Now, a lot of them have been dealing with the fear issue and faith issue and whatever. I'm just going to talk about just simply the answer. And the title of a very simplistic message, I thought about uh, really digging into some things like we did a few months ago and really get doctoral and stuff. Right, you know, uh, right now, God's people need something simple and something and know assuredly, and we can be settled in our minds and hearts that God's got it all in control and it's going to be all right. As simple as that. So uh, we... Where some are talking about faith, fear, and all of that, and we addressed that a few minutes ago, I'm going to simply talk about this. Jesus, the miracle worker. Praise God. I don't care if it's an AIDS epidemic. I don't care if it's a COVID-19, the bubonic plague. I don't care what it is. God's still a miracle worker. Amen. He's still on the throne. Praise God. So, uh... Brother Shade, if you would uh, pray over the message, please, today, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated today. Is there no balm in Gilead? That word balm there simply means to crack. As by pressure, it simply means a leak or a distillation. And then it said, is there no balm in Gilead? And it said, is there no physician there? Now, according to the scripture, that word physician means to mend. So when he said, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? He is saying, is there Nobody to mend the crack. Praise God. Or, and then that word physician means to cure or to heal or to repair or to make whole. And then he said, is, why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? 
that word health there simply means a wholeness or to restore to soundness or to be perfected. Now, the Bible said this in Isaiah 53 and 1. said, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Then he said this, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Aren't you thankful today to know that the Lord has already carried the load of everything you're facing in your life on his shoulders? Praise God. There's only one time that he's ever buckled under any load, and that was in his humanity when he was carrying the cross up Golgotha's hill. But since that day, he has never, ever, ever, ever once he became a resurrected Savior, he subjected himself to suffering. He subjected himself to the cross. The flesh did not will it, but the Spirit willed that the flesh would become a sacrifice for you and I. And so today, we know that he, what he was doing was carrying the weight of the world upon his shoulders. He has borne those things. He's carried those things. He's been through those things. You, you can look at the darkest trial that you have faced in your life and you can simply know that Jesus has already carried the weight of the load of that situation upon himself. He bore the iniquity of us all. Somebody said, well, I've just been in my past. I've been involved in grotesque sin. Amen. Even though he was a sinless individual, even though he was the perfect individual, amen, he was God robed in flesh, still he bore the weight of the sin that you've been involved in in your past or present upon his shoulders and what took him to the cross was his care for humanity and wanting to remit those sins and restore humanity to their fellowship and communication with God that Adam lost in the garden. But he was wounded. Why? For our transgressions. What is sin? Simply transgression, the law, transgressing the laws of God. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of, a, of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, somebody said, we are healed. We are healed. This isn't, this isn't the first time in my life I've had to trust God. I don't know about you, Sister Sandra, I can remember lots of times when you and your husband, amen, and family and different ones, amen, I was there, I know, I've, I've received text, phone calls, I was there in person at times, amen, when, uh, when you were just simply having to trust God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but uh, if you have a daily walk with God, you're walking by faith. There's things that happen every day you don't understand. There's things that go, you go through every day that you think, dear God, what in the world is going on in my life and my community and all of these things on my job? Some of you have contacted me and said, Brother Picker, there is craziness going on on my job. I don't understand what's all going on. I, I try to stay out of the line of fire of that kind of stuff, but there's all kinds of stuff taking place, and would you help me pray? And we don't understand all of those things, but we do know that if one door closes, somebody needs to hear this, if one door closes, God is going to open another one. 
Hallelujah. Somebody say, well, thus and thus didn't work out that I wanted. Well, that's, that's okay. God's got something better for you. Praise God. I said, God's got something better for you. God's got something that just fits you and just fits your circumstance and just fits what you're going through to help give you the power and strength. You say, I don't understand why I'm where I'm at right now. Well, just let me just put it this way. It may be a training and proving ground for something that's greater to come. And let me say this, God can bless you in spite of your circumstance in the right in the middle of where you are. Hallelujah. And with his stripes, we were healed. Now, Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse. Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. You know what I believe that's going to start happening is? I believe that, and I, I know that there are many today that have succumbed to this virus. But I don't believe I don't believe that what's taking place today is above or greater than divine healing. Praise God. I, I think God's people, even though we're apprehensive, even though we're cautious, I think it ought to drive us to our knees and seek God, amen, for a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. My wife I said, we need to start praying uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, against this thing. I said, I've already been doing it for a while. I mean, I'm not just praying for us in our area. I'm praying for our leaders, and I'm praying for other countries. I'm believing God that God will put a stop to this. I know that some things, like I said a while ago, those pestilences are come. We know that they're going to come. But uh, we're going to pray against this particular one as it's here. Amen. Perhaps it's going to wake a lot of people up and drive them to the church. Amen. I hope it does. I hope. But, but I can tell you this. Once it's over and the fears are gone, people go right back to the way they were before the pandemic started. Right now, people are stirred. But see, that's the reason why that I talk about more and, and the way I present it to people is it more about uh, uh, getting a love and a relationship with God instead of just constant, all you've got is fear. Now, the old timers have that right, though, but we need to fear God. We need to fear God. But that's not all we need to do. We need to have a relationship with him. Amen. We need to, we, we don't need to just live in constant fear in the backs of our minds. It's just like, let me just put it to you this way. Today, Today we're here. We've we've uh, taken call, uh, precautions, but you know what? While you were getting ready this morning and you were coming to church, you were thinking in the back of your mind, "Well, I'm taking a chance, but I'm doing something for Jesus." Amen. You're thinking. You know, I was thinking of the same thing. And, and and as a as a church leader, I have to be uh, prayerful and cautious. And and I've wrestled day and night with, you know, some will think you're faithless and others will think you're whatever. I can't help what people think. Amen. I'm just trying to do my best to protect you. Praise God. We, we didn't think it was faithless when about three snowflakes fell and we dismissed. <laughs> But there, there, there's so there's so much, uh, there's so much that you, uh, there, there's so many muddy puddles that you've got to wade through, in the midst of all uh, things like this. But I do know that none of these things supersede or, or are greater than divine healing. Amen. God. Somebody said, "Well, what if I come down with something? Well, what if God heals you? I don't know about you, but I've come down with stuff before." And God's healed me. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought him unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases. 
There's that word divers again. And torments of those which were, which were possessed with devils. I hope we don't have none of them today in here. But if you, you can get deliverance if you need it. And those which were a lunatic. Well, now I'm, I'm moving on. And those that had the palsy. And he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem, from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Now, let me back up and say what I was going to say while I go. We need to learn to have fear, but at the same time, our faith come to the forefront and say, you know what, I know what will happen if I don't in the back of the mind. I know I, I'm apprehensive about something, but still yet, I've got faith enough to believe God. It comes to the forefront. I've got faith to believe God that everything's going to be all right. Some way, somehow, amen, God's going to take care of me. Now, I'm going to say something that some of you are just going to, you're just going to plug your ears if you've got a weak stomach. And some of y'all, y'all know how I am, so isn't it crazy that we've came to a, a, the day and hour that you can rob a bank with a booger. <laughs> Forgive me, brother. <laughs> brother Shade's up here going, dear God, have mercy. My wife read that to me, so it's her fault. <laughs> oh, Lord, I shouldn't even say that over the pulpit. But anyway, uh, people are just skittish. They are everywhere you go. It's, it's, I, I was I, I was walking around looking for Brother Mark over in Lowe's. That's where he works, and and uh, I was walking around, couldn't find him. I started down this aisle, and there's this man and woman there, and he goes, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I just turned around, went the other way, and I walked the scenic crowd out of the store. It was seasonal allergies. But it, it just started seemed to just a, it was it looked like a fog coming. I, I know I couldn't see it, but it just looked like a fog coming out from him, and it was getting bigger. You look at the miracles of Christ in the Bible. In John two, the water was turned to wine. In John four, the healing the nobleman's son. In Luke five, the miraculous catch of fish. In Mark 1 uh, and Luke 4, there's the demonic, the demoniac in the synagogue is healed. In Matthew 8 and then in the books of Mark and Luke, there's heals, uh, Jesus heals Simon Peter's mother-in-law, Simon's mother-in-law. And in Matthew 4, he heals diseases in Galilee. In John 2, there's miracles at Jerusalem. In Matthew 8, he cleanses the leopard. Uh, in Matthew 9, he heals the paralyzed man. John 5, he heals the immobile man. In Matthew 12, he restores the withered hand. He heals multitudes from Judah, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon in Luke 6. In Matthew 8, he heals a centurion servant. In Matthew 8, he also heals the demoniacs. In Luke 7, he raises the widow's son at name. In Luke 7, he heals in Galilee. In Matthew 12, he heals a demoniac. In Matthew 8, he quiets the tempest of the sea. In uh, Matthew 14, he heals the diseased people in the land of Gennesaret. In Matthew 8, he heals the demoniacs in Gadara. In... Uh, uh, Matthew 9, he raises Jairus, his daughter. In Matthew 9, he heals the woman with the issue of blood. In Matthew 9, he opens the uh, eyes of two blind men in the house. In Matthew 9, a demon's cast out and a deaf man cured. In Matthew 14, more than 5,000. Let me just put it this way. You, you look in the margins of the Bible uh, and you just say the 5,000 were fed or whatever. That's not even right. Amen. You might as well say the 20,000 fed. 
Well, I thought it was 5,000. That was just the, the men not counting the women and children. So if they had two kids apiece, that was 20,000. And I can guarantee you, it, the number was higher than that. Hallelujah. Well, in Matthew 14, he heals the sick in Galilee. In Matthew 14, he's walking on the sea. In Matthew 15, he heals a daughter of the Syrophoenician woman. In uh, uh, Matthew 15, he heals the lame, the blind, the deaf, the maimed near the Lake Galilee. In Matthew 15, more than 4,000 more people are fed. Mark 7, one deaf man or mute man is healed. Mark 8, one blind man is cured. In Matthew 17, there's an epileptic boy that's healed. In Matthew 17, uh, the piece of money that's found in the fish's mouth. Amen. In Luke 17, the 10 lepers are cured. In John 9, the opening of the eyes of the one person born blind. In John 11, the raising of Lazarus. In Luke 13, the woman with the spirit of infirmity is cured. In Luke 14, the dropsy is cured. Even Matthew, the 20th chapter, the two blind men cured near Jericho. In Matthew 21, the fig tree is blighted. Amen. In Luke 22, the healing of Malchus's ear. In John 21, the second catch of fish. When the first night they didn't catch anything, the Lord said to throw it on the other side. Amen. In Matthew 4, uh, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Amen. And in Matthew 28, is talking about the resurrection which was the greatest miracle of all. In um, Luke 24, holds the vision of his disciples that they should not uh, recognize them. Luke 24, his appearances and disappearances. Luke 24, he opens the understanding of his disciple. And in Luke 24, in Acts 1 verse 9, his ascension. In other words, when Jesus comes to the house, into the house, there's going to be miracles, there's going to be healing, and there's going to be salvation. Uh, what our goal is today to get is to get Jesus in the house. Our goal today, amen, what you say, well, we've come to sing, we've come to magnify the Lord, we've done all these things. What we're doing is we're inviting him to come in this place and have his way. Amen, I don't know about you, but it ain't church unless Jesus is here. Amen, thank God that you and I are here, but it's of utmost importance that Jesus is in the house. When Jesus comes on the scene, amen, every time he come on the scene, something begin to happen. If he's got to walk through walls to get where you are, somebody said, well, I don't understand what's going on. Even if we have to have church in the parking lot, amen, Jesus will be out there because, because the church is not the building. The church is you and I. The church is the people. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. God's not worried about the stones and the bricks and all of those, and the mortar and the wood. God is more concerned about people. Praise God. Now for those that were having service online today, and if you'll look around, like we said earlier, we, we have, you know, you'll have somebody and then you've got to skip a row and then you have somebody and skip a row and so forth throughout the building. We're trying to, abide by those around six feet guidelines and uh, but some of them I was looking at a little clip that uh, they were getting ready over in Gravel Ridge Arkansas I guess it's considered Sherwood now brother Floyd Flyers and he told the people he said now when it comes church time tomorrow he said don't stay in your pajamas If you're, if, you're, if you're in the house and, and you're looking at this online, he said, don't stay in your night clothes. He said, get yourself ready just like you're going to church. 
He said, and, and gathering, where it may not be the same field or whatever, but I'm just going to tell you something. Amen. Uh, in China for many, many years under the communist rule, there's been a thing called an underground church. Well, how they would have church is simply this. Amen. They were not allowed to have church uh, unless it's a government church. And so, uh, and as a matter of fact, they will kill them or imprison them. But uh, even today they'll do that. So how they would have church. And uh, there's a lot of them getting saved. There's a lot of them getting the Holy Ghost. But how they have church is simply this. There's a group of them that will go outside and play a loud game of ball out there in the front yard while a group is inside the house having church. And then when they get done having church then that group goes outside and makes a lot of noise kicking a ball back and forth. Having a grand old time to drown out the noise that's going on inside the house. Amen. I don't know if it's going to come to that place in America but I do know today that, uh, uh, that, that we're seeing something now that that America hasn't seen in many, many years, if ever, like we are today. And so what we need to do is say, okay, God, amen, wherever I'm at, whatever I'm going in, th going through, amen, you say, well, it's, uh, I I'm not able to be there because at church at a certain night. I'm just going to tell you, you can have you some Holy Ghost church right there in your living room where you are, amen, when it comes prayer time, when it comes church time, amen, you say, hey, I'm going to more magnify my God right where I'm at. God knows where your heart's at. He knows you want to be here. Hallelujah to God. When Jesus comes in the house, miracles are going to take place. The greatest miracle of all that's going to happen this afternoon is not that we're having service right now. And, the, and I certainly have felt the presence of the Lord, but uh, a few of us are going to meet again this afternoon to baptize a couple young sisters in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know about you, but that's the greatest miracle of all. I don't, that, that makes, that, that's what this thing's all about. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here's water. What doth hinder you to be baptized? Praise God. Why don't you, why don't you, it's, it's a good time, it's a good day to make a start for Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, it'll make me look weird and awkward that I started during a pandemic. It don't matter when you start, as long as you start living for God before the trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. As long as you start living for God before Jesus comes back. I don't know about you. But I want to be pleasing unto him in this end time hour. I want to do my best, amen, to live for him. I'm going to, listen to me right now. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not going to do everything right. But God knows my heart. And friend, if I can come back in fellowship with him through repentance, amen, he will receive me unto himself. Praise God. The only reason that Jesus would not do miracles is something that happened in Matthew 13. Matthew 13 verse 54 said this, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogues insomuch that they were astonished and said, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not? I mean, this is the same guy that grew up on our block. Even though he was, can you imagine being in the neighborhood with a perfect kid? Jesus was perfect. Hallelujah. Praise God. But you see, they lost, some of them did not have respect. He said, it's not, it's, not, it's not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with us? When then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. He did not 
And he said, I'm not going to do it. These people don't believe. They don't have faith. Amen. Even though, even though the, my record goes before me, all these miracles throughout everywhere, and then I come home, and these people are just saying, oh, this is just old brother so-and-so. We know his mama, we know his daddy, we know his sisters and brothers, and, and we're just not going to trust him. We're just not, not going to believe in him. That's what will shut down a miracle. That's what will stop a healing. The Bible said he did not. Many mighty works there because of their unbelief. But look at Mark 6. Mark 6, the second chapter, and when the Sabbath day was come, verse 5, or actually Mark 6, verse 2, when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? They're questioning the very works that he's doing. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet's not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kin, and in his own house. Now remember, remember in Matthew 13, verse 58, And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. But in verse 5 of Mark 6, he said, And he could there do no mighty work, save he laid hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. One place said he did not. Another place said he could not. But even, now get this, even when those same doubters were there, he still found a few sick folks to heal. <laughs> I mean, three-fourths of the church can just doubt God, but a quarter of you or one or two of you just simply believe God. Right in the midst of all these doubters, and I know we got a lot of believers here. I hope they're 100%. But I'm talking about when Jesus went home among his own country, among his own kin. He went home. He did not. And then in another account said he could not. But then it said, save, heal a few sick folks. So I don't what I'm trying to tell you, it might not be exactly the type of service that, that well, well, it's going to have to be a special revival. It's going to have to be a special meeting. And, and we've got this quarantining thing in the back of our mind. And, and we've got COVID-19 in the back of our mind. And we all do. I don't understand that. Hey, Amen. I, uh, I think I dream about virus. But, uh, but, but I, will, I will tell you this, that in the, midst of, in the mix of all that, there's still needs, and God is still performing miracles. He's still seeking out faith. He's still looking for people. He said, when I come, shall I find faith on the earth? He's going throughout this globe right now. He's going throughout the, the homes and the churches, amen, all over this world today. And he's looking for faith that will, that will give him the authority. He's not going to move on a situation without us believing that he'll do it. He'll, he will stop he will not, he cannot move where there's unbelief. He will not do it. But if you'll exercise faith, he'll look right in the mist and he'll move around the room and he'll say, Ooh, here's one, here's one, here's one. I think I'll give them a miracle. Praise God. Wouldn't it be awesome if, if the, the room was so filled with faith that he said, you know what, I think I'll just touch every one of them. You say, oh, that's just not possible. Look at Acts 2. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Somebody said, oh, there was some that was there, 500 there and 380 left over 10 days, whatever. Well, let me just put it to you this way. When it got down to 120 and they stayed the full 10 days according to history, the 120 that was left there, amen, 100% of them were filled, 100% of them were touched, amen, and overflowed with the Holy Ghost. 100% of them were baptized in Jesus' name 
same. 3,000 more the same day got it just like they did. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, on the day of Pentecost, when this first started, it didn't stay in the upper room. It wound up in the streets. There was not enough room. For, there's not, there wasn't enough room for 3,120 people. And that was only the ones that repented and, and, and was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost that same day. There was a bunch more there that doubted and didn't believe it and, and, and was there that represented 16 nations at that time and a bunch of them that heard did not receive or believe but there was 3,120. Could it be that God is moving the church from the building to the parking lot? Could it be that God is moving a church, amen, online for a little while where millions can hear it? I don't know what's happening but I do know one thing. Amen. My trust is in the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what's going to take place, but I do know that my, in my God, I will put my trust. Amen. And I want Jesus to be able to move for us irregardless of what takes place. Praise God. The Lord's still working miracles right in the midst of it all. I showed up there at the bank the other day, and I said, you know, I said, I, I, I know this. Uh, I looked at the lady. I don't know where the man was. He was he's been in uh, meetings and stuff, but I had, I had a, the lady uh, that was finishing my loan. She said, uh, I was talking a little bit, and I said, ma'am, I know I look crazy being here. I said, I really do. I said, with all that's going on in this world, and I'm sitting here acting as if nothing's going on and going ahead and buying property in the middle of all this. As I know it looks crazy. As a matter of fact, it, it's settled. It's, it's ours now. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank God for it. But you know what? I'm just going to trust him. Everything's going to be all right. I told, I told my wife, I said, you know what? When all this is over, I'm not going to kick myself like I did several years ago missing the land deal. I said, God's going to bless us right in the middle of it. Praise God. Brother Victor, God bless your business right in the middle of it. Amen. God can keep them checks coming. Praise God. I know, I know some of us worry, kind of worry about finances right now. I understand all that. Why do you think uh, we posted the address? I'm trusting God, but I'm trusting you. You say, well, how does that work? I'll tell you how it works. Given it shall be given. <laughs> Press down, shaking together, running over shall. Men, give to your bosom. Somebody called us the uh, other night, or I, I seen a post, and somebody didn't have no bread, and, and we went on a bread hunt. Lord have mercy. I, I thought it was all toilet paper. There's bread involved. I called them folks. We found a few loaves. They needed about two loaves, and uh, we found some organic bread. You can tell I ain't had much organic nothing in this. I called them. I told them. I said, all I found, or my, all my wife found, was organic bread. They said, it don't matter. As long as it'll make a sandwich. I'm a sandwich. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, as, that's as scary as anything else right there. I mean, we do this in an ice storm. You know, for a, a couple of days. And then we go right back to normal. I mean, you know, us, us folks that live in the U.S., we're used to certain luxuries. Steve and Sister Sanders' son said there, there's trees out back. I said, yeah, but they hadn't put on the leaves big enough yet. Some of y'all get that here in a minute. I mean, we enjoy certain luxuries. Hallelujah. And by the help of the Lord, I'm going to keep a few of them. 
But some people say the day, days of miracles are over. But I don't believe that. In Hebrews 13, we've, we've read it, we quoted it or whatever, but it still stands true. That he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It don't matter. He is still, if he'd done it 2,000 years ago, he'll do it today. Amen. The same thing is in effect if we anoint them with all and we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Come on now. You know what that means? They got sick. If you have to recover, that means you got sick. Hallelujah. Well, amen. He's the same God. I don't care how much fear amen, that's out there. I don't care what, you, what kind of apprehension there is. Let me help you understand. James 5 is still as real in whatever we're facing as it was before it ever happened. Let me read that to you. James 5, 13, is any sick among you or, or is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. That meant that, and I'm not saying, somebody said, oh, are you saying that we're going to get the virus? I hope, pray, pray to God none of us get sick. I pray to God none of us get sick. But I will tell you, there's still healing. I said, there's still healing. But God is trying to help us today to understand that he's still a miracle worker. He has not changed it. It's not obsolete. You know, every book, extra biblical book that I read, I take it exactly as that. Because there is only one that we can absolutely count on and prove, and it's that one. This one right here. Now, Brother Shade, I know y'all got to teach you know, science and different things, and there's certain aspects of science that are really good, and there's been a lot of good stuff that's come from science. But, well, I, but I will tell you this. When a new study comes out, they'll change their mind on what they believe now. Is that not the truth? Amen. They, they don't approach medicine like they did uh, 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 50 years ago. As a matter of fact, uh, when, when they took out part of my, uh, the top part of my kidney and removed a tumor, what they told me was this. He said, five years ago, you'd have lost the whole kidney. He said, but right now, there's some new stuff out. And uh, we'll just take off 15% off the top, and you'll have 85% of functioning kidney. Well, you know what? I was glad for some technological advances. I remember leaning over and looking at this thing. It, it didn't look as freaky as they thought, uh, like they, you know, when they say a robot's going to work on you. I was thinking of an android or some kind of mess. He looked at me, a physician looked at me, and he said, uh, you got anything you want to add? And I said, yes, sir. I said, I hope you're real good at that video game because he ain't going to touch me. He's going to operate a robot. You say, well, are you giving him credit? I'm glad he knew what he knew, but I'll tell you this. The healing comes from Jesus. They can cut you in little bitty pieces, but the healing comes to G from Jesus. And even though science changes from day to day, year to year, study to study, the word of God don't ever change. Praise God. What does the Bible say? It is forever settled in heaven. And what I'm going to do today in the midst of all of these things, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. Oh, you say that's just so simple. We already knew that. You know what? We need to hear it again. Sister Erica, 
these are troublesome times to me. Think about having a child in. I, you hadn't said a word to me, but I know you're troubled about having a child and everything going on. But we gotta, we put our trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. It's, it is, and you just, you just got to trust him right now. Right now, folks, we don't have a choice. There are times in our lives that, well, we, we choose to believe or, or not to believe that, and we'll come to church and we'll, all of these, and, and, well, I just don't think I'll really get in there today, and I've got all this going on, and so God can't touch us. But right now, we don't have a choice. We've got to trust him. You don't know who you're passing I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being honest with you. You don't know who you're passing that's a carrier. They carry for up to two weeks before it ever shows up. Before they ever start having symptoms. Folks, we just got to, we've got to trust God. We've got to trust him. It's not easy. You had not got to see your wife yet? Have you got to see her yet? Is she home? Thank God for that. For a few days, they wouldn't be able to see her. Amen. Total lockdown. Thank God she's home. I hadn't heard. Shame on you. Tell me. Tell me. Worry me to death of her up there by herself. But when they took her up there, the hospital said she can have no visitors. Yeah, these are troublesome times in compared to what we've seen. But we're going to still trust him. We're not going to lose hope and we're not going to lose faith. That's right. We're going to keep believing the Lord. And the next step we take, however cautiously, we're still going to keep walking for God. Praise God. We're going to still keep believing that those things, those scriptures I read today, very familiar passages and these ministers up here today I'm sure there were other verses that was rolling around their mind we don't have another hour or two to do all that but I will tell you today that God's got us praise God hallelujah let's stand right now so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest could upon we lift our hands to the Lord his right promise now just to service. know the Hallelujah. The if you're Lord. still well today you need to thank Jesus, God for it Lord, I love you, Jesus. Trust him. I love him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust him. Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just to simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus' sin. Taking 
life and rest and joy and peace Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus Savior friend and I know that thou art with me wilt be with me to the end Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm going to ask Brother Shade to come and lead us in prayer against this virus going around and God's protection over His people. Would you pray with Him? Lord Jesus, we love you and thank you so much for the great things that you've already done and all of the testimonies that we have in our lives, the way that you've built our faith through your preaching, Lord Jesus, through the deliverance of your word and through experiences that you've given us, Lord. And we know that right now in this situation, regardless of how things are going around us, how things look, we know that you are still the one true God, Lord, that you have given us power to speak your name over every situation. Your word promises that we will be able to do greater things than you did through your name Jesus and for your glory and we ask right now as, as we are leaving this place Lord that you will put your hedge protection around everyone in our church and our families Lord build our faith our zeal Lord Jesus our ability to speak your name in these situations knowing that you are the one true God that you have a perfect will for us Lord that is higher than our ways and that you know better than we do Lord and that no matter what we have your name in this situation that we can speak your name Lord we thank you for it we thank you for your protection we thank you for your word in Jesus name Amen.